Now we are recording. Okay. Welcome. Today is October 27th, week six of our Tally 1021 uh, class here. Okay. So this is the last slide of the last presentation uh, last week. Uh, just as a uh, just as a review, uh, this is a PBX right here, private branch exchange. And uh, when you were in the labs, I pointed out that this is the phone system that we are using. Uh, uh, if you need to know more, talk to me. I will walk you through it. These systems are it's a it's an interesting scenario with this North Star Meridian systems. They were very popular, extremely popular in. 1990s, but the phone systems were so good that even though uh, that uh, they have been officially discontinued, you could somehow still buy a new, brand new phone systems. Where it is produced, by whom, who knows? Uh, but uh, it's these are these systems are still quite popular, All right? So here's a private PBX, uh, private branch exchange. Uh, this is a box or a system installed physically in the facilities such as uh, business offices, uh, um, small business usually, because uh, uh, this one here is 616 by Northern Meridian. It is capable of six lines coming in, six CO lines coming in. CO stands for central office. So and these are the POTS lines, plain, on telephone, plain old telephone service, uh, which is the regular telephone line. Okay, red and green, uh, tip and wing. Okay, now uh, it does have an internal connector and the internal connector is connected to something that's called a BIX frame, B-I-X. Uh, it's a cross-connect frame. Uh, the 25 pair cable that I showed you in the lab connects to one of the frames and it punches at the front and then it's being flipped or to the back so you can grab the pairs from the front. Uh, we will have a lab associated with that. I'm going to get you to punch a 25 pair cable onto one of those frames, uh, according to the color code. It's not today's lab, today's lab is different, uh, but uh, it's, I think it's gonna be the next lab. All right. So that uh, PBX uh, connects to that, and then according to the, according to the pinout of that, uh, of that particular phone system, here are the stations or here's the pinout of that frame so pair one which is blue white white blue is station first station and the extension is 21 up to six stations so 616 uh, is uh, uh, stands for six lines coming in and possible 16 extensions so 16 of these 16 telephones right? then there are there are different uh, um, peripherals that can be connected to that uh, it could, there could be auxiliary ringer, and let's see what pair is it on. Auxiliary ringer is on pair 24, auxiliary ringer contact. It's just a dry relay, relay contact that closes and opens based on uh, uh, how the system is programmed. Usually it is, auxiliary ringers are installed uh, in noisy environment, or um, one of the best example is if there's a supervisor's office in the production hall, uh, uh, sometimes the supervisor is on the floor working with people and uh, they, uh, the office sometimes needs to reach that person so uh, that person will not hear the phone ring in his office or her office. Uh, so something like auxiliary ringer can be put on top of the door or somewhere that's visible. So when the phone rings, that auxiliary ringer can be associated with uh, the um, uh, uh, with that particular phone station. It can be programmed when that phone is, for example, this here, station three, for example, if that phone rings, make that also uh, active. And uh, there are different auxiliary ringers. Uh, some of them just make noise. Some of them flash the strobe light. Some of them do both. Uh, the equipment is available uh, by different companies in different shapes and forms. Uh, how is it uh, done? Uh, basically, it's a relay. You see, this is auxiliary ring, uh, so pair 24 in this particular one. Auxiliary ringer contact, so it's a dry contact. It closes, open, it's closed. It's just a switch that opens and closes. And that auxiliary ringer is uh, uh, supplied, has a power supplied, uh, external power transformer or whatever it is, uh, has uh, um, uh, 
it has a power supply connected to it. So if you just connect the power supply terminals into the terminals of this auxiliary ringer, ringer, it's going to ring as long as the power is supplied. So then that switch is placed in series. So uh, it closes the circuit and then uh, that auxiliary ringer rings. A simple, very, very simple concept. Then uh, uh, instead of the phone extensions, ATA adapters can be plugged in into the system and ATA acts just like a phone extension. It's just like a telephone. So the phone system thinks it has a telephone uh, plugged, in, in, uh, plugged into it. And um, uh, basically all the features are, you can connect regular phone into it, just a regular telephone that you buy in your local hardware store. Uh, POTS phone, uh, plain old telephone service phone, just a regular phone that works with the regular CO line coming from the city. And that would plug into the ATA adapter and the signal from that would be translated into the proprietary signal that is understandable by this phone system here, okay? Uh, uh, that is being used in production halls uh, as well as you can see door station. Door stations are quite popular as well. They used to be installed in elevators some time ago, but now they, we cannot install them in elevators because in elevators the phone, uh, the uh, telephone that is in elevator has to be independent on, of any. Uh, powered equipment, so it cannot go through this because if power goes down in the building, that phone cannot be used in an elevator. But where are they being used? Quite popularly, is in the uh, big, big companies uh, where they have the trucks coming in and they come into the gates, and there would be one of those uh, uh, door station, uh, one of those door stations um, on the post uh, raised, so the truck driver can just press the button and that can initiate a call and it could be set up as a, a hotline. Uh, so when it press the phone, press the button, that uh, programming of this ATA adapter as a phone can be set up so it rings uh, maybe a reception phone or a supervisor's office. It could be programmed to ring automatically at the press of a button, uh, uh, whichever extension or telephone, uh, or it can be programmed uh, to dial outside, okay? So that is as far as connecting ATA adapters, and as I say, ATA, ATA adapters, analog telephone adapter. Um, uh, so those ATAs are made uh, to work with the specific equipment. So if Meridian phone system, if like I said Meridian, North Star Meridian has their own phone system, they will have adapters, ATA adapters, that work with those only. Okay, and then on the other side, you're going to have a single line output. Uh, if it's a Panasonic phone system, they will have a Panasonic brand made, ATA adapter made uh, specifically to work with the Panasonic, Toshiba or whatever brand, company, uh, Cisco, and they would have ATA adapters proprietary, made proprietarily, or pr pr proprietary adapters to work with that particular phone system. And at the other end, they will have a single line output. So you can connect a regular phone. Now ATA adapters are also being used to connect with the paging interfaces. Uh, so again, uh, the paging interfaces are made to work with single line input, single line telephone input. And if the, um, if the phone line rings, which would be 90 volt DC provided at the contacts of the paging interface, which this would provide, because if you dial the ATA adapter, the ATA adapter acts just like a phone. It just doesn't have a handset, but it has an input for a telephone. So that telephone, for example here, it, it is its handset. Or it could be connected to paging interface. So when you dial the extension that is assigned to the ATA adapter, uh, that is going to, it can be programmed to ring the output of it. Okay, so you will provide just a ringing intervals uh, of 90 volt, at least 90 volt DC uh, on the output of this, uh, of, of itself, okay? <clears throat> and then this paging interface is going to sense that and it can be programmed to automatically answer and provide your confirmation beat. So if you use this telephone to dial the ATA, uh, then it would automatically pick up or, and they would ring its output 
that ringing signal would be detected by the paging interface. Paging interface would automatically pick up. It would send you a confirmation beep. Usually it's just a very simple tone. Uh, then you would hear that in your handset here, and that means uh, could mean different things. You could uh, uh, it could be set up to uh, just talk after the beep, or it could be set up to uh, uh, dial um, a number, press a number, uh, if you want to select different paging zones. Uh, those can be set up in various different ways. So then, of course, the paging interface is connected to the paging amplifier and the paging amplifier is connected to the distributed audio system that we have just connected last week, okay? And then again, we have the idea of 911 telephone. 911 telephones, when you install telephone systems in big facilities, you are required to install 911 phones. That is, the 911 phone works as just like a single line telephone set, not a proprietary telephone, proprietary telephone set. This is not this phone set here, that is made for the Meridian or for Panasonic or for Toshiba or for whatever else is not going to work with the regular CO line. It work only understands the signal provided by the system that it's made for. Uh, so um, the telephone single line set or single line telephone uh, also is not going to work with that because it doesn't understand the signal of the, uh, of the telephone system at hand here. But this single line set is supposed to connect straight into the CO line coming from the city, bypassing everything that is pluggable and needs power to operate. So if the power goes down in the building, this telephone here has a telephone line provided by the city or by the company that's provided, uh, providing the telephone service and the telephone lines will still be active because the power of this line is completely independent of the power of the building. And then 911 telephone call is, uh, you can make 911 telephone call. Now, um, <clears throat> uh, just as a reminder, when you're installing 911 telephone in the facilities, it should be one telephone per line. Because if you install this telephone here and you daisy chain it, parallel connected with another telephone, which is completely somewhere else in the building, uh, it is going to work. Uh, you can uh, you can pick up this phone and it's going to work. You can pick up the other phone, it's going to work. But if you don't hang up this phone, the other phone w w is going to be useless. You, you won't be able to get a dial tone on that one. So for that reason, one telephone, one 911 telephone set directly to the telephone line. So if you have um, three telephone, 911 te telephone sets, you should order three independent CO lines uh, that go uh, that supply these telephones. Okay, so that's just an overview of how the uh, good old analog system works. Or it's not completely analog because the signal uh, that is provided from this phone system into the telephone sets that are associated with that it's in the form of a digit. It's, it's, it uses digital protocol, but uh, for the sake of argument, they are being called the old analog uh, phone systems, as opposed to VoIP, because uh, VoIP uses also digital telephone lines. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, I like to call it the conventional telephone system, as opposed to VoIP telephone system. Okay, today we're going to um, I'm going to queue this up here. Today we're going to look at a VoIP telephone system. Yeah. Uh, VoIP telephone systems are quite popular right now. <coughs> uh, there are some reasons for that. One is the money, and the other one is the convenience of usage, or the, 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 the way it is used. and. Uh, there's a huge improvement of how the telephone systems are being used. And I'll show you, uh, we'll talk about this thing today, on how this thing works, okay? So VoIP stands for Voice Over, <coughs> excuse me, Voice Over Internet Protocol. That's the meaning of the acronym here. Okay? The concept of the VoIP, of the, well, let's just get, take a look at some of the concepts. Uh, review some of the terminology, private branch exchange, also known as PBX is a telephone system installed locally. It's a box that is installed in the facility and it services as the facility as a telephone system. Uh, <clears throat> so private brand PBX is a telephone system locally as a system that service serves 
uh, closed facility, usually in a commercial environment such as an office, building, or production plant. Okay, the purpose of PBX is to provide locally distributed telephone sets to individual clients in a way that the end user can the end users can call each other internally uh, within the building or within the facility without the need to select an outside line. Okay, so, um, um, okay, the elk also can you, uh, the PBX also can perform the, the end users can perform audio paging. Uh, the end users can also use telephone sets to communi communicate with the outside world, not a new concept, uh, or they can receive outside calls directed by either the reception operator or automated routing system. Okay. Uh, the end user can also use a designated voicemail, uh, transfer calls uh, to other end users, um, and they can also do conference calls. A conference call is, um, well, this Zoom session is basically a conference call, but it's a video conference call, okay? If there's a one call between multiple users. Uh, the end user can use, ben, uh, can benefit from other, <coughs> excuse me, locally enabled system features, and we're gonna discuss some of that. Now, VoIP versus conventional PBX. Let's just compare these two um, for the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> definitions, PBX, private uh, branch interchange. Uh, ex <laughs> can't speak today, oh my God. Uh, PBX is private branch exchange. We talked about that. CO line, it's a central office. Telephone line, in brackets, POTS, which is plain old telephone system. VPN. Uh, stands for virtual private network and the SIP line. So we have two new terms, uh, well, three new terms here, VPN, SIP, and PRI, okay? So VPN is a private, uh, sort of virtual private network. SIP is a session initiated line. It's a SIP line, session initiation protocol. That's what the acronym stands for. And PRI stands for primary rate Interface, uh, what's a VPN? A VPN, virtual private network, is a private network that is embedded into the World Wide Web, the internet, basically. Uh, it, it's designated um, to specific end users. So um, let's say, as an example, uh, let's say there's a grocery store, like right? just think of any groceries, big chain grocery store. Um, let's say Metro, all right, or uh, no frills or whatever else. Um, all the cash registers that are in that store are connected to the virtual private network that is connect that is basically connected to the main office wherever it might be. So all the all the transactions that are done in the cash registers they should automatically through the virtual private network, and they're being stored in the whatever the main facility is. All the variety stores, uh, that would be like 7-Eleven, okay? Their cash registers also are connected to the virtual private network. Virtual private network is a, is a web space designated to only the people who are allowed to use it, and it's purchased by, uh, by companies. So it's a private, it's a, it's a chunk of the web of the, of the internet that is only available to people who privately purchased access to it. Nobody can enter from outside. Okay. So that's what virtual private network is. And we're going to talk about how that associates with the VoIP. Now virtual private networks go a long way. They, they, um, all the money machines are connected to the banks, virtual private networks, anything that, ha that, that, that needs to have internet access, that the transactions or the communications has to be centralized somewhere, uh, then the virtual private or VPN is, uh, is, is, is utilized for that, okay? So uh, then uh, SIP lines, uh, well, uh, SIP line is a, um, 
well, the CO num the CO line, central office lines, one central office line or one CO line is a physical pair of wires that go from the central office right to the end user telephone. Okay? So it's it's one telephone line carries one telephone conversation. Okay. Now um, a SIP line, session initiation protocol, is a designated bandwidth that could be that could be on one uh, on one wire, on one wire, one pair of wires, such as DSL digital subscribers line, or other uh, forms of providing internet. Uh, and it's a certain bandwidth that is needed to carry a telephone conversation. So that one pair of wires can have uh, frequency multiplexing. Uh, that it's just like radio waves, but done on a pair of wire. And that line can have enough bandwidth to service, like say, five telephone conversations at the same time, ten telephone conversations at the same time, hundred telephone conversations, depending on what kind of connection you have. But the SIP lines are virtual telephone lines, right? as opposed to CO lines, which are physical telephone lines. The end effect is still the same. You still are able to select one of those lines, either the CO line or a SIP line, and carry a conversation. Okay? So, um, so that's the idea of a SIP line. And primary rate interface, we are going to tackle that in the next couple of slides here, okay? Uh, SIP, session initiation, so with that, uh, SIP trunking. Also, SIP trunking uh, makes it possible to connect PBX or internet, enabling business communications without using the PRI, PRI lines, okay? So, uh, a trunk, uh, a physical trunk, is a cable containing multiple pairs bundled in one type of a cable. Right? And uh, so the SIP trunk would be uh, gathering uh, virtual uh, lines and bundling them as one connection. Okay? So one is physical, one is uh, virtual, but they will, the, the end effect should be the same. Okay? All right, conventional PBX, comparing those two uh, with the uh, conventional versus the VoIP. Okay, so conventional PBX has a locally distributed telephone set. All right, okay, that's quite obvious. Uh, internal calls within local facilities. So internal calls can be made within the local facility. Conventional CO lines are used to dial out. And it utilizes locally installed PBX equipment. It's a physical box that is actually installed in the facility. Okay. Now let's uh, take a look at the VoIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. Uh, it has locally distributed telephone sets, so no difference here. Internal calls can be made within the local facility and other facilities that are within a common VPN. Oh, so that opens up all kinds of possibilities here. That's a huge difference because I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to, after I get through these two points, I'm going to uh, show you something. Uh, SIP lines used to communicate with the outside world instead of conventional telephone lines. And now, here's another big difference. Oh, we got mail. All right. There's another, um, uh, <coughs> that was a regular mail, physical mail that we just, somebody just threw it in here. All right, uh, now, uh, locally, in, locally installed PBX or a hosted routing. Okay, now we're going to expand on those two ideas. So, uh, internal, so the calls. Let's just take a look at the calls. Do I have a slide here? No. Okay, so let me just uh, explain something to you. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, there is a there is a facility. It's a physical building, okay. And this building has offices, and those dots are going to represent telephone sets within that building. So there is a locally installed PBX here. PBX. 
Um, eh, let's just make this thing. P, B, X, right here. Okay, locally install PBX. Now, those telephones can call each other without having to select another telephone line. Let's say there's another building, okay? And um, then, um, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, now, um, let's say there's another building that has also other telephone sets, and then there's another PBX, PBX here. So these telephones can call each other. Now, in order for this, uh, this telephone set to call that telephone set with a conventional telephone system, it has to select, it has to make a connection with the PBX, then that PBX is going to select an outside line, and then there's another, uh, there's an outside line here, uh, and that outside line through the um, central office, okay, uh, it is going to connect with that PBX, and then either the receptionist is going to answer the call, or uh, that PBX can automatically route the phone is if it's set up that way, and it, the phone, the connection can be made that way. So that is the conventional uh, kind of a telephone routing. Now let's say we're going to take a look at the VoIP. Okay, ah, let's just get the board ready properly here. Okay. Uh, all right, we got it. Now, let's say there's another uh, scenario using VoIP. Here's a building, okay. here's another building. Uh, there are telephones in there, there are telephones in here. Now, <clears throat> you can, um, and then there is a cloud, which would be the internet. And it could be VPN portion of that, that VPN could be purchased by whatever the big company is that has two branches. So now, there are two ways. It could, you could have locally installed PBX here, and you could have locally installed PBX here. Which are connected to the cloud, to the VPN. So the phone calls are being made using internet or using the VPN part of the internet, virtual private network that is assigned only and private to that company. Now, in conventional system, if those buildings are in the same city, no problem. You just have to have enough telephone lines to accommodate the number of telephone calls uh, that are usually done uh, simultaneously, okay? Now, <clears throat> if those two buildings are in different cities or in different continent, on, the, on different continents, then a long distance phone call has to be made to reach that within the conventional PBX. But if you're using VoIP, then this PBX is connected to the cloud. Basically, it's an internet connection. And that PBX is connected to the cloud, connected to the VPN. No long distance is involved because this is connected to internet, that is connected to internet. It's just like browsing on the web, except you're using voice. Uh, so this telephone set here could have extension one, two, three. This extension here, could have extension, let's say, five to three. You do not have to select external line. You could just dial the extension number and connecting this phone to that phone would be just like selecting an internal extension. In just, there'd be no difference in calling 
that phone calling this phone here or that phone calling that phone even if those two buildings are on different continents they both can be set up as internal telephone calls which saves the companies a lot of money first the the money is being saved on not having to purchase so many locally wired co lines and then the the long distance telephone calls are basically eliminated right so that's a now locally or hosted let's just tackle this, this while we are still here this would be a voip telephone system utilizing locally installed pbx so this building have a this building has a box that is a phone system that building has a box as a phone system it's connected to its network it network the it network is connected to the internet and the signal processing happens through those communication communicating between these two over the internet what can be done is there could be another company that is connected to vpn that company can be anywhere in the world let's say the company x now the local pbx is eliminated in both buildings now i'm just using two buildings but it could be 17 buildings all right whatever now if this phone wants to connect connect with that phone it connects to the internet so there is no physical box that is called a telephone system all the telephone uh, sets are connected to a network computer network just as any other computers are uh, but because of the hardware they're being used as telephones not as computers now that connects to the to the vpn through the vpn it connects to the hosted the company who is hosting the telephone service for the whole big company it could be a third company this company could service 100 other companies that's what they do for a living that's their job then from there the line the the signal is routed through the internet to that phone again no long distance charges applies because internet is utilized vpn is utilized for that then again if this telephone wants to call this telephone which could be just a cubicle next to that person again the phone is routed to vpn through the company and it's routed back to the next cubicle so that's the difference between locally installed pbx or hosted service this will be a hosting company uh, for different reasons uh, different companies might choose to have one or the other it depends on, on what what's uh, more economical um, uh, for the uh, for, for, for the company here all right let's just and now that uh, local that hosting company again could be anywhere in the world so you could be having uh, two branches in london ontario and the hosting company could be in montreal and that hosting company can connect excuse me your buildings or your branches one could be in london one could be in hong kong the other one could be in Bangalore, India, uh, or somewhere in China. It doesn't matter. There is no long distance telephone involved, no long distance calling involved, as long as those, all those branches, all those facilities are um, on the same VPN, virtual private network. Okay. Uh, so that's that here internal calls within local, uh, local here. Internal calls are made with the VoIP uh as the internal calls within local facility and other facilities within the common vpn so now you understand that line and of course sip lines are used to communicate with the outside world instead of <coughs> regular co lines and then uh, you understand now the meaning of local install pbx or hosted routing keep going 
primary rate interface <clears throat> it's just a terminology that uh, I, I thought that you would uh, it would be uh, really good that you know what that is because if you're uh, and uh, I, you know what 99% chance is uh, I bet that uh, when you go to the outside world, leave the college, and you find yourself jobs, you're going to have to deal on some level with what I'm showing you right now. Uh, primary rate interface. Uh, it's one physical line, up to 30 simultaneous phone calls. <coughs> now the technology uh, can be moving forward. There could be, uh, th this could be changed, this could be increased. It's an end-to-end -end digital circuit. So the circuit is terminated at the facility and the other end of the cable is terminated somewhere in some central office. One PRI line consists of two copper pairs. One pair is used for transmit and the other one is used to receive. Now, um, as the technology moves forward, the PRI can be imposed onto a, um, a cable net or it could be imposed onto a fiber optic uh, line. But we're just going to talk about the PRI for now that is used co that, 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 that copper. Modem is required because it's copper. Multiplexing is used to carry a multiple channels over one line. What is multiplexing? Multiplexing is concentrating on one thing at a time and switching between tasks very fast. So let's say there is a... Um, there's a pair, there's a pair of wires, and there is a connector that connects one type of conversation. So, say there's a circle, there's another circle, there's a line, and there is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, let's say. And there is a rotary type of a pointer. Uh, this is the simplest way of explaining uh, multiplexing. Okay. So there will be a telephone set connected to these points here, these two points. There will be a telephone set right here. Can we see that? Yes, we can. So of course, that pair is connected to this pair. And that pair is connected to that pair. Let's say here that is a bit of a break here. Let's there's, there's, there's an insulator and there's an insulator here. Whatever else, okay. So um, now these two are connected. So these two phones are talking to each other. Now if you switch that dial to here and this. Could be servicing another telephone here and this could be servicing another telephone here uh, this one here now these two telephones are talking and these two telephones are silent and then if you have another one that connects to another telephone a set of telephone sets a conversation and there's another one so you are disconnecting one conversation and connecting to another one. So these two are talking right now, but the same two lines are being used. Right? Now, if you do the switching extremely fast, and if you synchronize both sides, then uh, to the end users, there will be no difference because the switching on and off is going to be so fast that there's going to be to a human ear, there's going to be no time lost. So that's multiplexing in the simplest form. Raise, raise, raise. Okay, we're good, I think. No, we're not. I need some windshield wipers. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, so multiplexing use, is used to carry multiple channels over one line. Each PRI channel bandwidth is about 64 kilobytes, sorry, kilobits per second. Kilobits, we're talking about speed, and kilobytes, we were talking about storage. 
PRI, two common types. E1 will be can, uh, able to carry 30 channels and it's usually used in Europe and in India. And T1, this will be uh, about 24 to 24 channels and it's used in USA in Canada. So if you're uh, talking about telephony in Canada or communications in Canada, you are quite often you're going to be hearing the T1 terminology. Where's your T1? Show me the T1 box. And more or less, it looks like this. This is a T1 service. So there are T2, T1 services, uh, connections. Uh, going into the utility room in this building here. Quite often, remember I was talking to you about dry loop and hard loop. Dry loop, remember, is a telephone line that has only internet signal, only DSL, digital subscriber, subscriber line. And a hard loop is a diagnostic tool. So quite often, as a if you're sent to us to the site as a technician, you will be asked to plug in a hard loop into one of those, and you'll be on the phone with, um, with whoever is providing that T1 service, and you'll be asked to plug in a hard loop, and a hard loop is basically a, a, an ethernet connection, a computer jack connection, that also has transmit and receive pairs. And in a hard loop, the transmit is just fed right into back into the receive. It's just like a loop, transmit into receive. So you're closing the loop. So the person who is on the other side, they're going to do their magic doing the testing and speed testing and whatnot. Uh, and by plugging in the hard loop, hard loop, you, you are giving them the opportunity to do the testing of that line. And then they're going to ask you to unplug that and plug the rest of the equipment as a diagnostic. So it's a diagnostic procedure. Yeah. Local PBS versus, PBX versus hosting. Uh, I just explained that thing to you in some sort of a detail. Now, uh, just as a review, a physical hardware placed, so it's a local uh, PBX, physical hardware placed in the facility at hand. All telephone connections home run, which means basically there's no daisy chaining involved. Uh, every phone is, has a designated cable that runs into the box, all right, the physical hardware. Uh, so all telephone connections home run uh, to the cross-connect points distributed around the facility or all telephone sets connect to the computer network um, and then uh, interfaced with the local PBX. Uh, all systems connections are connected to the PBX directly or through a computer network. Internal calls are routed through the local PBX. All outside calls are routed through CO lines or SIP lines through a local installed PBX. <clears throat> so here's a local, you know, hosted, no locally installed PBX on site. There's no box anymore that serves as a telephone system. All telephone sets are connected to the computer network. All calls are routed through the hosting client, which is what I just explained to you. <clears throat> using VPN, uh, the hosting client hardware can be installed locally or anywhere in the world. So one building can have, can, can, can use as a hosting service. Uh, one building of the same company, right? But uh, usually it's a hosted routing, so it'll be a company that, that, that's uh, outside company that's providing the telephone service. Connections to the hosting clients are established through VPN, virtual private network. All connections between end users are treated as internal calls within the same, provided that they're within the same VPN. This means that a call between London, Ontario and Hong Kong is, would be treated as an internal call if within the same virtual private network. So I explained this thing to you in two ways right now. All right, connections as opposed to the other one. Um, here will be the telephone sets, the connections as far as, as, far as 
VoIP, Voice um, over Internet Protocol. So all the telephone sets connect to the patch panel, just like all the other computers are connected to the patch panel, but these will be the phones, and they use category cable. Minimum CAT 5E has to be used, and we will talk about the difference with differences between cables in our le le uh, following lectures. But just as you know, CAT 5E is the minimum that is required to service VoIP telephone sets. So if you are going to do a survey, and survey is if somebody wants to have a VoIP system installed, there will be one person sent to that facility to perform a survey. And survey means basically going there, see what's what, and making notes. And uh, based on the notes, uh, actions have to be taken. So if you go there and you see that the tele uh, the network cables of the computers are using network that's lower than CAT 5E, which right now you still would see in some older installations, uh, you would see CAT 5 cables, category 5 cables. Then you have to know, let the client know that these cables have to be replaced. They have to be upgraded to CAT 5E minimum. Usually CAT 6 goes now, minimum, right? But minimum for the VoIP has to be CAT 5E. Right? So these, the, 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 the phones are connected through the CAT 5E cable minimum uh, to the patch panel. That patch panel is uh, plugged, and so they go on the other side of the patch panel, and from the front, each individual connection is plugged into the switcher. The switcher has to have PoE, which means power over Ethernet, which means the cable that connects the phone is supplying not only the signal, but is supplying also the power to power the phone. Otherwise, you can still use it, but you have to have external adapter and plug it into the wall. And that's usually not used. It's not very aesthetical uh, solution. It's as a last resort. Right? Uh, so PoE, so some switchers, uh, some switches are capable of PoE outlets here, and some are less expensive that they're providing only signal, um, not power. Some of them would have maybe the first eight ports are capable of PoE and the other ones are just signal. So when, in, when choosing the equipment or verifying that the equipment is capable of handling the uh, VoIP phone system, you have to pay attention to this kind of detail here. That switch is connected to a router and the router is connected to the internet. And I just put a little bit here, Cisco, that's a Cisco uh, system here. Uh, usually you would have something that's called VPN. So when this thing is booting up, when this thing is powering up, uh, you are going to see a bunch of lights flashing and you're going to see that the, there would be a uh, when um, wide area network, which will be the internet, would light up. That means that the system found internet, okay? And then after a while, it's going to do a little bit of its magic on its own, and it's going to try to connect to VPN. And if uh, that is not on, then the phone system cannot be used. So uh, sometimes you cross your fingers, hoping that the setup that somebody sent you, this thing is already pre-configured. If not, you're going to have to make some phone calls and they will either log into the system externally or you're going to have to log in with your laptop and they will tell you what to do or they will just take over your laptop and they will do their magic. Uh, whatever it is, this has to be set up to join the proper VPN. And the whole thing is connected to the internet. So that's basically the setup for VoIP telephone system. Connection topology uh, could be a dedicated. In the office, you would have two network outlets, one network outlets, which they both be, could be connected to the same switcher, to the same switch. Um, <clears throat> and uh, one could be connected to one port, and it would service the client's computer. And there will be another one that would service the client's phone. So there'll be a dedicated connection. Each outlet has a dedicated. So this one is dedicated for the phone. This one is dedicated for the computer. Or you could have inline topology. Most of the VoIP telephone system, telephones, they have an input and they have an output. So you would use only one internet connection or ethernet connection. Uh, that is connected to the switch, and then it go. It would go to one outlet, 
to the of the telephone and it will usually be labeled to the network and you just plug in to that network and from here it goes to the computer uh, most of the let's say when I was servicing uh, some time ago I was servicing the Home Depots uh, uh, if anybody has a part-time job or working for Home Depot you will notice that uh, they have this type of a setup uh, in their cash registers or workstations there will be a VoIP phone system and you will plug into the computer. So whatever the signal that the computer needs, it would go grab it through the phone and go to the network. And whatever the phone needs, it would just uh, grab from the network, uh, the phone system, uh, phone system signal. Okay. So the topology is the way of connecting or signal routing. It could be a dedicated or inline connection as far as VoIP. And this is the back side of a phone, all right? You're going to try based on what I told you, Try to uh, make sense out of these when you download this presentation here in PDF form. Okay. Uh, connections, as far as, uh, well, uh, let's say PA system. Yeah, well, how do you connect the PA system? Because there is no physical box saying there is an audio output. Everything is connected to the network. What do you use? You use ATA adapter. So if you have a Cisco phone system, or Cisco VoIP system, for example, you would use a Cisco ATA, which would be probably sent to you by the company who's uh, like hosting company, for example. They would send you an uh, ATA adapter and you would have an ethernet connection. It would plug into the network and the other one would have, what else? A single line plug, which would be connected to the SL plug, single line plug into the, in or jack into the in, uh, paging interface and the paging interface would just work as it does. It would send the ringing tone and it would do its magic. Sometimes it would send you a confirmation tone uh, and sometimes you just talk or sometimes you're required to press another button to select an action. Like let's like say for example, which zone you want to page. Is it the hallways, is it the offices, is it the production plant or whatever else. And that is connected to an amplifier or multiple amplifiers or one amplifier and the routing would be selected uh, uh, through it, through the, through the paging interface. So different, different uh, distributed systems, different speaker arrays or lines would be connected not to the amplifier, but to the different outputs on the PA system and the output of the amplifier will be also connected to a terminal that's here. Right? So uh, that's how the paging interface or other peripherals that could also be connected instead of to the PA system, it could be connected to a night ringer or a loud ringer. Okay, uh, suggested video links. Uh, I'm not going to play you those. Uh, these are going to give you just a little bit more uh, idea of uh, how the VoIP system is, uh, is set up. Okay, now we have, uh, we're almost done here. I'm going to meet uh, whoever I'm going to meet during the lab. I just bring your side cutters and Sharpie. That's all you need. And the, your safety glasses and, of course, the face covering mask. Now we're going to do a little bit of VoIP, uh, not VoIP, uh, POTS connection. Let's say we have a wire, multiple, multiple pair wire that has blue orange, green, and brown pair. Okay, these are pairs. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's say the other side of this wire has, you know, pairs, and they are connected to specific telephone lines. This has nothing to do with the Ethernet connection, but the CAT5E or category cable uh, can be utilized as telephone uh, routing signal. So let's say the blue pair is going to be connected to line one, CO line one, CO one, line one, CO one. Uh, so that'll be the blue, blue and blue white. Let's see the orange is connected to CO two, okay, central office line two. Now, so we have a blue pair here, and here we have orange pair here. Here's green, and here is uh, brown, four pairs. And you have a 
a telephone jack, let's say surface mount telephone jack that is using utilizing modular plugs or modular jacks. And the modular jacks also have pairs labeled uh, blue, orange, green, brown. The blue pair, the blue pair Blue pair. Is the two middle prongs here. We're talking USOC. Universal system ordering code. Oh, I gotta maybe it doesn't fit the screen. So blue pair is the blue pair is the middle prong, two middle prongs, and it's pair number one. Then the orange pair is pair number two. And then there will be green pairs. So there will be three pairs using the USOC configuration. So if we want to connect a single line set here, uh, we would have to connect the blue pair into the blue terminals of this modular jack because the blue pair is the two middle prongs. Now let's say another CO comes on the orange line, line and we need to connect that to work as a tele, single line telephone set. Where are we going to, which terminals are we going to connect this orange pair? Anybody can tell? Nobody. Well, we still need to utilize the two middle prongs. So even though this color is orange, it still has to be connected to the blue pair. Blue pair, because this is the two middle prongs. And we have a green pair, we have another telephone that is connected to the same cable. Uh, this would be a green pair, it still has to be connected to the blue pair because that's the two middle prongs, which, which is the pair that the single line telephone system is using. All right, so we're going to practice doing that during today's lab. I'm going to give you a piece of cable and I'm going to give you a different type of connection uh, co uh, connectors. And you're going to connect that as a pot configuration, which would be plain old telephone service connection. Later on in following labs, we're going to use the same cable, CAD 5E in, the, in our case, uh, to connect, Ether to make Ethernet connections, and we're going to be a different T568 type of a connection. Uh, so now we're going to use the pods, plain old telephone service. That's going to be our lab. Okay, so bang on, 11 o'clock, one hour. Thank you for joining me in this class, and I uh, will see the portion of you today during the lab. And well, this is going to be healthy and stay safe or something like that. Anyways, okay. I'll see you when I see you. Thank you for watching.